My name is Izzy. Um, my artist name is Izzy Voodoo. My name is Michelle Plastria. I'm Julia of Zeke's Lunchbox. My practice incorporates uh, digital illustration, traditional painting, animation, a bit of sculpture. I'm a multidisciplinary artist, but with a focus on hand-built ceramics. I make colourful sculptures, some of them functional, some of them purely sculptural or a blend between the two. I make colourful animals, lots of alien women, lots of work inspired by pulp art and vintage toys. With these works, I actually moved into working in um, sort of installation with like my acrylic pieces. I like to focus on like pop surrealism with hedonistic characters. With all of the works in this show, it's purely sculptural. They're all very bright, vibrant um, underglaze colours, which I feel like is uh, kind of a more unique kind of corner of ceramics. We're not using kind of drippy bohemian glazes. We're going bright, opaque colours. Oh, I had so many goals for the show. <laughs> I don't know if all of them were achieved, but I started to chip away. One of them was really just to focus on making bigger scale artworks. After a few years, people know me for, you know, a lot of colour. Um, alien women, but it felt like a natural progression to really push myself to make bigger, more complicated scenes, both in scale and context. So I want to challenge myself by doing that. Hopefully it's achieved. <laughs> My goal for the show, I really wanted to like push myself and make new work and try things that I hadn't done before. And I think I really pushed myself probably too far. I made work in like a completely new medium, things that I'd absolutely never done before. I think it paid off and I'm very proud of the work, but I wish I'd like given myself a bit more time to like experiment and play and not have it be like such a stressful experience. <laughs> My goal for the show was similar to both yourself and Julia. I think to challenge myself um, in terms of technical skill, in terms of, I would even say time frame to make what I wanted to make, in terms of project loading, all the other projects kind of surrounding it, time management, um, I would say there was probably less that didn't challenge me than did challenge me. I think the timeline of everything um, grossly underestimated how long it would take to paint these pieces, especially, you know, I thought I had lots of experience figuring out the timeline with my other pieces and all my other acrylic paintings, but these paintings took almost like six, six to four, to six to eight weeks to make, so the timeline and just blew out like crazy. So that was definitely my biggest challenge. It was a whole new medium. Um, I made pieces uh, in acrylic and was laser cutting them. And I had never even made like vector work before. So I had to learn how to use Illustrator. Like, and also there's like PCB elements, there's lighting elements in all of these works, which are like not things that I've ever done or used before. And shout out to my friend, Tully Babel in Focalypse, who um, helped me make make them because these works like truly would not exist without him. So the challenge was just totally like learning a new medium as I went, praying, just praying that it all came together, which it did, thank God. The work that I've done in Fenestra, um, there's one installation piece. So that was kind of the first ceramic installation that I've done. Uh, that definitely was a challenge. I'm really happy with how it came together though. Um, and also there's quite a few wall pieces in this work, um, even just kind of working out the logistics of how to install these pieces was really um, a little bit challenging. It's a bit of a process, there's a little excavation happening here. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're coming up Mill House, I think everything looks great. And also uh, bringing things from the Gold Coast down to Melbourne, like learning how to pack ceramics to make a long journey. Yeah, that was all the challenges that I think I faced and nailed. <laughs> Um, there were some pieces in the work that were more detailed than I anticipated. In my head, the way that the concept was going to come together, I actually thought that I could like smash them out pretty quickly. But yeah, I think there's a few edges and things that I think are always going to be a little bit rough with handmade ceramics in, in um, the first place. But working when uh, it's supposed to be showing kind of 8-bit pixelated sharp crisp shapes, was a little bit of a balance to find what was okay and wonky and what was kind of the, the level of still getting the message and the concept across. So I think those detailed pieces really kind of threw me for a loop. I think that was one of the big challenges. How are we feeling, Izzy? <laughs> Screaming internally. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Everything's looking beautiful. So white walls are a little intimidating, uh, but we persist.
The work's all installed. How are we feeling? Good. <laughs> yeah, I feel good. Yeah. Like genuinely, I feel really proud and I'm, I'm feeling really stoked. I actually haven't seen it totally completely. No, I, I left neither. a little early, so yeah. I, I'm going to get like a little fresh feeling of walking in there and seeing it like totally complete, which I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, like I, I do feel really proud, which is like sometimes hard to say. Really good. Um, I feel like I'm, I was saying to Izzy before that I just feel like every time that before a show, I just have all, like, always have all these doubts. I'm just like, oh, what have I even made? Like, do I even like it, you know? Absolutely. And then as soon as, like, the nerves come and it's opening night and you're just all there to celebrate it, you're like, oh, no, I'm actually, I feel like it takes for that for me to get proud. I know? feel like I'm actually not going to yeah. feel settled until Saturday morning. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll feel depressed on Saturday morning. I'll be like, it's done. Now what? What do I live for? Oh, I can't believe it's finally coming to a head. Yeah, yeah we've truly. We've been working on it for such a long time. Nearly a year, right? Nearly a year, yeah. yeah from like finding from the concept and um, finding the space, making the work. Yeah. Uh, so good. I'm very, very proud of us yeah. for just actually sticking it through and Working with you guys has been so easy. We're still friends! I know! <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's set the date, let's make the work, we'll yeah. check in, and then yeah. things just kept on moving. Truly, like, in terms of collaboration, it's, like, literally been bliss. Yeah. Like, there's something really surreal about, like, exhibiting with you both, because I've obviously been a fan of both of your work for such a long time. So that's just, like, a really nice, I feel, like, little tick for me as well. Aww. I know that this came out of the fact that we're, like, friends and have similar interests artistically but I like actually don't think that you could have curated a better group of artists to complement one another with our really works good. like our work just like harmonizes really well I don't know we didn't plan that no it, it was it worked out and I think you were kind of finding all these like commonalities between the work and the links like whether oh there's gosh. mainly links between yours and Izzy's and links between mine and Izzy's so they're kind of like all these little like crossovers and the way I think I'm really happy with how it's like all set out in the spaces mm -hmm. as well I think all the pieces sit really nicely in conversation with each other retro technology mm -hmm. as it crosses mm -hmm. over you mm -hmm. know there's a couple in the front room there's you know the way that I've installed mine some of the colors that I've used like um working like harmony with yours and yeah and then obviously there's you know your figurative work is so um sits in beautiful conversation with each other so yeah I think it's going to be you need to capture that uh, that whole room absolutely it's, it's we can yeah we were like oh i'm gonna make this and i'm gonna make this and i'm gonna make this and it was never mm -hmm. we were never consciously thinking about how the work was going to complement each other or whether we needed to tie the work into yeah. each other really mm -hmm. we just kind of did our own thing but it has harmonized in this like really beautiful way okay so the theme of the show um how do we how do we come about with uh nailing this theme so the theme of the show is finestra which in i'm gonna sound so learned but i'm not <laughs> um in latin means window and then in biology it references like a pore or a small hole in, in tissue and I know that like when we were first coming up with the theme for this show, I think we were talking about like portals mm -hmm. and we were talking about world building. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of like how that came about. With the world building, we were all on that wave. Yeah. I feel like all of the pieces and all the work kind of has like one foot in reality. Like there's yeah. there's a definite step stepping um, stone. Well, I guess with um, my work, it's kind of looking at 2080, so envisioning 2080, but through the lens of uh, 1980. I think that just came, one, I just love the aesthetics of the 80s, but also it makes sense. I was born in 1985, so it's kind of like literally talking about like what were the expectations of the future in 1980. Mm -hmm. And I think like it's always fun when you go back and watch old sci fi movies yes. and like what they thought like <laughs> yes. the future technology yeah. was going to be like. Yeah. And the, those mm -hmm. aesthetics are just like always so fun. But also some of them, like we have found with Star Trek, like come to fruition. Like they make look different. Yeah, 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 but yeah, like yeah. they actually yeah. exist so you know now we're in 2023 like what kind of new trajectories are we thinking a food printer but it's like looks like an old dot matrix printer and it prints out these like kind it's of so cute. <laughs> it's really so cute these kind of like pixelated foods um and there's also like misprints and glitch marks because like we need to be realistic about like the realities of technology technology you know mm -hmm. i feel like um whenever you I know that like uh, my place of work is uh, like highly um, run by technology. I ended up getting locked in cupboards and things like that all the time <laughs> because 
because it's just a it never works as seamlessly as you want. Mm-hmm. iPhones try to talk to each other. There's always some sort of glitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like this pro- progress, and then some of these little hangovers that kind of happen from this rapid succession and how it does that. There's always that teething stage. I like how there's yeah. a bit of cynicism in there as well. As yeah, well as it's the not always. Yeah. I think that's, that's in all, all of our work. work. Yeah. yeah, all of our work. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting how that just worked out. Yeah. I'm really glad that I made this work right now. Mine is sort of like t- dealing with our relationship to technology and exploring like especially the rise of AI. And when I first started looking at like creating these these works, I stepped away from social media. I used to be like much more involved and using a lot of social media and I was like, I don't really want to do that anymore. I don't think it's like good for my mental health. And I was kind of examining that. I was like, okay, what's my relationship to technology? What's my relationship to social media? And then AI had just sort of started mm. like this this new rise of AI had sort of just been like ruminating in the background. And I was interacting with that and using that and I was like, this isn't something that I could use in my practice currently, but it's very interesting. I'm interested in where this is going. So so I was making this work as these things were happening and that was really informing my relationship to this work because it is about AI and it is about technology and I'm not pro or for. Mm-hmm. In doing the work I've kind of like explored both angles and I'm like firmly in the middle. I'm really excited by like the possibilities that all this stuff is presenting us but I'm also like a lot of people scared like mm-hmm. some of it's scary and I interacted with these technologies as I was making the work. So so like the first piece that I did was Ishtar. To do that work first, I was like, okay, I'm going to talk to Chat GPT about this work and I'm going to see what it gives back to me. And I was genuinely so impressed. Like it helped me research. It helped me like formulate ideas. It was like having someone to like chat through this with or like a little like collaborator. And I was like genuinely pretty like taken aback. But it's a really contentious issue for artists and I like fully understand why and I understand why so many people are like really against it. For me, I was like, this is really impressive. It's really exciting. I'm, I enjoyed using it. I'm going to explain the piece I'm trying to make to it. Mm-hmm see what it gives me back Mm. and see its interpretation. And in a lot of ways, its interpretation was like really basic and it wasn't that exciting. Um, But when I was using it for reference images, it was giving me these like really weird things. Like the most exciting stuff that comes out of it is the glitch. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. like the glitches were really, really cool. And some of that has sort of translated into my work. Yes, I had noticed with the fingers, with um, Prometheus. Yeah, Yeah. in Prometheus, it's intentional that the the hand has like seven fingers. It's a good nod and it's also, I think a good like um, marker of where we are right now. Exactly. Like, we'll back in a exactly. Few time and see that because that's um, all already gone. Yes. So we've yes. moved past that mid journey. Can now render hands. Mm-hmm. So that little moment in time where it was making these like glitchy hands is like almost gone and mm-hmm. probably by the time this video comes out will be entirely gone yes. that's so exciting and weird like I don't want it to get perfect almost yeah, totally. I want it no, to stay too. weird I'm, I'm really enjoying the glitchiness I used AI for references in my pieces as well mm-hmm. and with the two cats that I placed in the gates um, that piece is really me trying to figure out my Filipino heritage and like AI was learning what the culture was at the same time that mm-hmm. I was learning it yeah. so it was really cool seeing like two different interpretations and then like lots of different layers of interpretations from like the very first iteration of the reference to then how I made the work and then how the work ended up. Totally. Like when I finished my Ishtar piece, I went back to the journey and I explained my piece to it again to see what it would get. And like whilst I... I'm proud to say I like mine more, <laughs> which so is hard for me to say, but I do. Yeah. But I was, it was, it was cool seeing yeah. what it what it did. The way I interpreted the theme for the show was because I am going on this new journey of like figuring out Filipino culture, figuring out Asian culture a little bit more. What that means to me, especially so late in the game, like mm. in my, I'm in my thirties now. I mm. should I should know this stuff already. Mm. So these little portals and fenestras into each world are like just tiny little glimpses and like scratching the surface of me trying to figure that out. I was really motivated to make or take this new journey in exploring Asian women's identity because, well, I keep seeing a lot of men take our image and profit off it. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. 
it's just kind of commonplace and it's still very prevalent in the art world to take Asian aesthetics and just kind of like, this is cool, you know, like yeah. this is like everything sci-fi and foreign and Asian women's images are so taken in sci-fi art especially. And I just wanted to take it back a little bit mm. and just make it so it wasn't so fetishized. I know it's not very intentionally fetishized, but it is in the end like stems from that. So minute, it's such a tiny little change, but I think it makes a really big difference so I wanted to make the band especially because I felt like it was important to just so show fun. women yeah. <laughs> just having fun yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. let's not be sexy for once. Yeah. Let's just, like, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> like, I love that your work is so fan. It's yeah, so, so fan. unapologetically fan. Yes. And it's just, like, yes. such a joy to see. Yeah. Say. It can be sexy, but it's still not through – it's not for the male gaze. Mm -hmm. It's sexy for women. Yes. Women are like, yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. I Like, I, I want to be her. Yes. It's not like – I know, the buzzword like, of the moment of being empowered, but that is the intention. Like, mm -hmm. it's meant to be celebratory and it's meant to be healing. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. With the self portrait, it just felt like necessary to mm. put myself in the work. Mm. Like, I'm, it's probably going to be the only self portrait I make where it's like a reflection of this space where it's like, all right, I'm here. This is me about to go into battle mm. and like wrestling with these paintings. And then lastly, the gates was like, I'm interpreting it as me standing in front of the gates of this new journey. Yeah. Beautiful. So, um, you know, Mother Nature Gaia, the purple uh, Medusa, she's she's guarding this space and um I don't know I'm about to take take it all in can I ask you about that piece mm -hmm. because you I know that you've mentioned before yes it's about your heritage but it's also you wanted to make it for so long yes you, you've talked about wanting to make it for so long I wanted to explore new stuff and like I've been wanting to make this piece for so long because it felt right like years ago to mm. want to do this mm -hmm. but it just scheduling just didn't work out so mm. the painting didn't actually turn out exactly how I had planned uh, I always had the image or like the the composition in my mind but it wasn't necessarily um about the gates to the Philippines mm. it was I thought it I always interpreted it as being like a I don't know, a fantasy movie cover. Yeah. I think it's so much stronger, it's so much stronger having it now. be yeah. about your heritage. Absolutely. And, yeah. and yeah, like about your, it's about the world that you create, but yeah. that world that you create has to be informed by your your heritage as well. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean, it's hard specifically with Filipino culture because, um, you know, we were colonized for 300 years mm -hmm. and, um, and then America liberated us. <laughs> <laughs> And the Philippines is very American now. Yeah, um, sure. it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like a Hawaii two point mm. um, So not only do I have diaspora in being an Australian, but then I have to go back and try and find the pieces and the crumbs yeah, of Filipino culture. Sure. So there's so many levels and layers of trying to find culture. So mm. I don't know. The tattoos were um, like some of the last remaining pieces that still exist in the philippines yeah mm. i think the gates are a really beautiful symbol as well because it's kind of like the beginning you mm -hmm. know and it's also about like literal that i feel like there's a lot of um sometimes you come up against like literal gatekeeping against yes, culture totally. as well and i'm sure that's something that you feel like being australian philippines like so yeah. um yeah i think that it tells your story and the starting point in this time so beautifully yeah julie you mentioned that um, even in a previous video that, you know, this self-portrait um, journey is like quite uncomfortable for you. Um, I'd love to kind of like hear more about, I mean, I know you're talking about the culture as well, but I also think that um, there's maybe a personal element to it that mm -hmm. maybe makes you um, uncomfortable. I think that in conversation with how Izzy's work, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is referenced in some way to some sort of like self-portraiture. Um, even if it's not a direct image of yourself, there's a lot about, you know, your stories or experiences mm -hmm. intertwined in there. I think this is the, the part where um, Izzy and I, I, don't, I guess our personal lives that really come into it because Izzy is a retired model so you're used to being the spokesperson or like you know facing the artwork and I've always been the behind the scenes person mm -hmm. um so I'm I'm finding it confronting putting myself in the work it's it's mm -hmm. very scary and very vulnerable and I've used like the sci-fi lens as a 
barrier. Yeah. Mm. So now I'm yeah. breaking that. So it's it's intimidating. But yeah, what about you, Z? I think there's two things going on when you talk about like self portraiture in my work. One is where it's intentional, and I am in the work. For a long time, the way that I was approaching my work was I was creating it out of like experiences that I had. So it was kind of like pretty autobiographical. Mm-hmm. A lot of my works were basically instead of a diary entry, I would I would make an artwork. Your work, especially for this show, like often deals with some pretty like heavy societal themes Mm. but because it's so colorful and bright it's like really uh, accessible Mm. to people that was like something that you were consciously doing uh, or if it was just kind of a byproduct of like how you work um I think both I think that's something that's always been like in my personal values and things that I really care about um and then I think the merge of like my aesthetics and the way that I create work, it kind of just married really nicely. There's one that's called about climate change. There's one that's called um, Brain Dump and it was about researching these processes. I was making work that was about climate change and evolution and kind of I was trying to pick out specific factors that were um, influencing the world around us and particularly animals and, you know, what was kind of harming them. And it was just so intrinsically intertwined and it was actually really hard to just like put a line through and be like, it's this and it's this and it's this. Mm. And and then I was going a little bit crazy trying to prioritise things that didn't have a priority. Uh, yeah, that's where that brain dump piece came out because I just wanted to, like, put everything that I was thinking down mm. in a non-linear way mm-hmm. um, just to kind of, like, get it out of my out of my it head. It translates so yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I think about the work that I like and the work that is accessible to me, and I do like that this work is accessible and it, you know, kind of reaches all audiences and it's not, you know, it's maybe not spoon-feeding it to you, but, uh, like, the... The, the messaging is like quite clearly there and also using it's like makes it a bit humorous as well I think the, like the tetris metaphor is yeah. so i think it's really clever i think the way that you've called it think fast is like <laughs> also very because you do you're like you get this panic you panic of, of playing tetris and then be like oh no that's the situation we're in yeah. with climate change i think it's genius Mm -hmm. but it is in a way that's like really palatable and doesn't feel doesn't feel like virtue signaling or doesn't feel like abrasive or condescending well i don't have the answers i think that's the whole thing is i'm not out here providing answers i'm just being like i'm internally screaming like the rest of us like can we think about this and and um yeah kind of uh, similarly to you, I had a like discussion with Chat GPT about that Tetris piece, and and I and and you know it kind of was an extension of what I was working through with the brain dump piece and how there you know where all this kind of came from, where I was thinking about you know there's so many exciting things about progression in you know all areas of life but there's also these really um regressive symptoms or hangovers that kind of come with that and you know how do we move forward with progression without without the you know regression and then it's maybe not possible Mm -hmm, but with mm -hmm. better planning it's you can mitigate it you can minimize it every problem is caused by technology every problem is solved by technology (laughs) (laughs) yeah get people thinking but not be preachy because i don't have anything to preach like I'm mm. not out here being like no, you're just wrapping a cage. Yeah. 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 Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. Please. yeah. Well, moving on to the audience. Mm. What do you guys want the audience to take away from? I'm so from interested to hear you your responses to this, actually. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I want them to be happy. Mm. Mm. I kind of see myself at of at, obviously as an artist, but then especially with the YouTube career, a bit of an entertainer as well. Sure. So I'm hoping, you know, when people see my work, especially when they haven't seen it for the first time, it's mm. really lovely just getting their cold reaction and just like, just giving them like, even if it's two seconds to not think about the world for yeah. those two seconds. Mm. So like, even like, you know, you've shared kind of previews of you making it with us the whole way, but like it... No, the screen... Yeah, the Until videos, the videos it. never yeah. showed off right. No, no. 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 Yeah. Especially I was especially with mine. Your sculpture is just yeah. like ridiculous to photograph. Yeah. Everything that I put on the catalogue just looks so flat because so I had to do it front on. You can't even tell that there's like all these like depth, like this depth and edges, like which is the hardest was the hardest part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a hundred percent. And like yeah. even there's only one front image of. I looked at the catalogue again last like, yeah. night and it was like, wow, the catalogue just doesn't even it's do so it boring. justice. Yeah. It's so boring. The work, like, 
yeah. yeah. The working person has to be experienced. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm just hoping that like people feel inspired by it. That's all I yeah. I hope for really with like I don't really care if anyone's like actually interested in my thesis or my ideas about my pieces I just hope that they kind of like come and they enjoy them and they feel fresh to them I I think we we've achieved this with all of our work Mm -hmm. I just want people to go there and actually just phones away no talking just sit stand around and appreciate the work Mm -hmm. because the works do are strong enough to actually get your attention in that Mm -hmm. for sure way yeah it's actually nice during the install to see people stopping by and like being distracted enough on the street to like want to take a peek and Mm -hmm. point to things and have conversations about it that was like very it felt like a good sign for me Mm -hmm. that it's like you know before it was even in its full glory display that front room looks Mm. pretty good (laughs) all right yeah cool come to the (laughs) destra please come please come